All right, everyone, we're about to get started here. We have Eshma with Trek to Yomi, Kinsei, uh, which Kinsei did win the uh, the bid war. Nice. Love to hear it. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Eshma. I'm going to be running Trek to Yomi for you. And you did good because you selected Kensei difficulty because that is my preferred mode to speed run this game in any way. And it's also, I think, the most fun to watch because as you can read on screen right here, for those who want to switch things up, everything besides bosses can be defeated with a single hit including you so this is basically a one hit kill mode if i get hit at any point during the run it will send me back to the last checkpoint that i use potentially losing me quite a bit of time so in a speed run setting you know you can go very fast if you don't get hit but if you do well this can be a little bit painful in comparison to that we would have ronin difficulty which is your goal chosen which basically the normal hard mode of the game where everything has just ludicrous amounts of health and it will take a lot of time um to push through it, just for comparison's sake, the Kensei run will take about one hour and five minutes-ish, I want to say. Ronin difficulty takes one and a half hours and more. So we save about 30 minutes just by <laughs> selecting Kensei difficulty, which is awesome. Furthermore, there is a second incentive coming on where you guys can go ahead and choose the ending. And you have about you know 50 to 55 minutes until that incentive has to be closed during the run. So, you know, get your donations in for that. Because, you know, those three endings, they are quite different, which is pretty fun. Anyway, enough of the foreplay, as they say. How about we go ahead and start this run? Uh, the timer will start once I start skipping the very first cutscene. You will see the skip button show up in the upper right corner of the screen. As soon as that is there, the timer will start. So I will give you. I will try to give you a countdown, but you know, just so you know. Anyway, let's get this one going. So. Timer will start in three, two, one, go. All right, here we are. Welcome to Track to Yomi. We are playing as Hiroki, which is the strapping young youth, youth sorry, at the right of the screen here. And we are being trained as a samurai by our master, Sanjiro. He's like our foster father because we don't have any parents because we have a main character syndrome. Anyway, doing a little bit of katana training here. As soon as you hear the name, you can actually already start in putting uh, the commands in order to just save a little bit of time. And basically, this is the fighting tutorial. You know, you learn your basic actions that you can do in a fight. You can swing your sword in different ways. You actually have to manually turn around by pressing a button, which is kind of interesting because this is basically a 2D game most of the time, at least. You can block attacks. You have a stamina meter in the lower right corner of the screen. And you can obviously parry attacks. So let's go ahead and do that. These are a little bit precise, so I'm just gonna stop talking for a moment and get this parry training done because I don't want to lose a lot of time here. Well, while you're doing that, I have a couple of uh, donations I can read off. Go ahead. We have uh, $10 from Zaz, Z-A-H-S, uh, in all caps. I assume that's Zaz, uh, with no comment, but that $10 was put towards trying to put Murder House into the marathon. Unfortunately, that incentive was not met. And then we have $10, $10 from Tim Trollgasm. Uh, so I, his comment, so I didn't die in my run, but I'm going to donate some money anyway. We do appreciate that, Tim and Zaz. Thank you both for your donations. Uh, and I will see if Tim, what, what Tim put his towards uh, chat chaos coming later on in, uh, which one is chat chaos? Ah, in GTA San Andreas, which is now at $10 out of, how did I lose it again? $10 out of 200 all right, back to you. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, we just completed our training. Uh, as it so happens, our, um, you know, Sandro, our master, actually didn't complete the training with us. Instead, he was, you know, whisked away by some other 
person here, which is kind of unusual because, you know, our master never skips out on training. So we are now in search of him together with his daughter, Aiko, which is the little girl that is following us around here. She's basically, you know, kind of like our childhood sweetheart, so to speak. So we are now, you know, walking through or running rather uh, through the village here in search of our master. And, um, you know, we're hearing some strange sounds coming from the gate leading into the village here. So let's go ahead and investigate what might be going on here. So as it turns out, uh, the village is under attack by bandits, which is not good. We are kind of fearing for our master here. I mean, he's probably holding them back somewhere, but um, we'll see if you can help him. So let's go ahead and do that by killing our first enemy. Bang, there we go. And that is basically how the game will kind of look if I do it correctly. Because whenever you are in a fight, the game switches back to a 2D plane. Uh, however, the enemies don't exactly adhere to that, as you can see, and we already have our first death. Nice. Immediately showing off how hard this game can actually be, because this enemy didn't behave the way he normally does. Marvelous. Um, like I was saying, if you are exploring, the game has like this weird 2.5D mode going on, or rather, it is a full 3D environment. However, as soon as you are in a battle... What is this guy doing? Why did he go so far back to the left? I've never seen that before. Um... The game switches to a purely 2D plane, which you can walk around on. However, the enemies still have uh, access to the foreground and the background in order to try and circle around you. You do not have that luxury. So what you try to do is try and bait the enemies onto the combat plane so you can actually start attacking them. Now yours, some of your soul strikes actually have a little bit of reach to the foreground and or background to them, so you can kind of hit them when they are trying to walk by you, but it is a little bit finicky. You'd rather just wait until they are properly established on the combat plane and then go ahead and strike them. Which is also why sometimes you see me stand in specific spots in order to bait the enemies a little bit quicker onto the combat plane and then strike them, while this guy gets a free hit onto me. Obviously, I'm just going to show off you guys how finicky this run can be and how hard it actually is. Because, you know, this is cancer mode. A single hit will kill me and put me back at the last checkpoint. So you have to be absolutely sure about your sword strikes. Um, otherwise, you know, you whiff and you die and you go back to the last checkpoint and you're done by doing that. So let's try and not die too often now, shall we? Actually, grabbing this shrine for safety here, normally I wouldn't need it, but the next enemy has been known to kill me as of late. But I guess his companions already did that for him, so let's just hope he won't do it again to me. So here you can see this uh, crane contraption, which you could actually do is uh, slice it, so the load of it would drop on these three bandits down there. But since we don't have to fight them anyway, we can just opt to not do that and just continue on. It would lose a lot of time, but it would also gain us absolutely nothing, so why do that? He will pick up our first stamina upgrade. You can see my stamina bar in the lower left corner of the screen from time to time. And with these upgrades, I obviously gain a little bit more stamina. Now, stamina management is critically important in this game, because every time you do something while you are in combat, like, you know, swinging your sword or running, you will lose stamina. And if you run out, Hiroki will get tired and be basically defenseless, which... On cancer difficulty, basically means you're dead. So uh, you do not want to run out of stamina, if at all possible. It's okay-ish outside of battle. It will obviously be a little bit slower, but during battle, if you run out of stamina, you're basically dead. We are now coming up on the first boss at the end of the first chapter. You only have to parry him and strike back. 
Okay, didn't get the parry. There we go. And that was the first chapter. And now the game, you know, basically makes a time skip, like about 20 years or so into the future. We are now an adult. We are married to Aiko, as far as I can tell. It's not explicitly stated, but it's strongly hinted at, or at least they are in some kind of romantic relationship. Um, more importantly, though, our master Sanjiro died at the end of the first chapter there, because we actually went one on one against the bandit lord, which was, you know, the boss of the first chapter there. Obviously, we were not able to defeat him because we were just a kid, you know, in training. So our master interfered and got killed in the process. And now, years later, uh, we are basically together with Aiko, the head of the village. And once again, it has come under bandit attack. However, not only is our village under attack, but a neighbor of Ilnish as well. And Hiroki, in his hubris, says that he will try and defend both of those uh, villages. So he and all the other samurai set out for Kami Kabamura, which is the neighboring village, in order to try and defend it. However, uh, we got ambushed and now separated from all the other samurai, so we are on our lonesome trying to get to that other village. Oh, that was not what I wanted to do. I just wanted to use this. Because now that we are an adult, we have access to the bow shuriken. And... The bow shuriken are not that great on any other difficulty of the game because they only did a minuscule amount of damage. However, they can still go ahead and stagger enemies. However, on cancer difficulty, they are bar none one of the most useful tools in your arsenal. Because remember, everything dies in one hit. And that obviously goes for the shuriken too. So since you can throw them pretty quickly, they are just you know massively good. Basically, the, you know, like I said, the best tool in your uh, arsenal so far. We will get a bow and another range up a little bit later on. They are still good because you can only carry around a very limited amount of ammunition for all your range weapons, so you want to switch it up just a little bit. But just keep in mind that the shurikens on cancer difficulty are very, very good. Anyway, while we are making our way through the mines and stuff like here, uh, Reaver, if you have anything to plug, go ahead. <laughs> Oh, I always have things to plug. Let's take a quick look at... We've got incentives coming up. Um, we have, of course, picking the ending of this game, uh, which you have another 40 to 45 minutes to do. Currently, <clears throat> Love is winning with $1 over Duty or Vengeance. Uh, and then for the next game, the Star Fox 64, uh, not race, score attack, score attack, I'll never remember that. Uh, you can make, uh, you can force words to run the Japanese version, uh, which apparently loses like four points out of 2,500. <laughs> uh, and then uh, the next bid war after that is the category choice for the game Journey. Uh, red robe versus white robe. White robe is currently winning with five dollars. All right. Um, you saw me kill that enemy on the bridge there. That is the first armored enemy that you run into. And normally armored enemies are like very tough to beat. They have like a lot of HP. They can take quite the beating. However, once again, it's kind of difficult. Everything dies in one hit, so we can take out these guys pretty easily. The thing to be uh, mindful of, though, is they always start with an overhead attack. And if you do not parry that attack, if you only block it, it will stagger you, opening up for further attacks. And once again, cancer difficulty, you probably won't uh, survive the retaliation. So, uh, you know, you have to be mindful of that happening. So now we actually made it into Kami Kabamura, you know, the second village, which is, which is under bandit attack. And as you can already see right here, the bandits have literally gone to town, you know, setting it ablaze, killing people. It's all around a miserable time here. And we are just trying to make our way through it, killing as many bandits as possible, but also having a look out for our captured samurai friends so we can, you know, regroup and take on all of these bandits in earnest. Um, during the course of the game, you actually learn a couple different attack combos, which, you know, you either learn at specific points in the run after killing certain enemies, or you can find in secret areas while you are exploring the locales here. Uh, some of them are very useful, other ones not so much, as it just so happens. 
Um, however, on Kensei difficulty, we basically don't go out of our way to pick up any of them. Because, once again, everything dies in one hit. We are only concerned with, uh, you know, killing the enemies as quickly as possible, getting through the defense. And all the combos that we actually need to do that, we will pick up automatically during the course of the run. Which is kind of nice and makes this category go by pretty fast. The everything dies in one hit concept reminds me of the PS1 fighting game Bushido Blade. <laughs> it is kind of similar in that regard, yes. And to be fair, uh, I have a background in running Ghost of Tsushima, if you know that, and it also sports like a lethal mode, uh, which is kind of similar to this. So once I knew that this game had this mode, I was just, you know, I just wanted to run this because it is just really fun. Like, truth be told, uh, the first time I played this game, like, casually, I didn't enjoy it quite as much because I uh, uh, immediately started out on Ronin difficulty, which is the hard mode. And if you are not familiar with how the game works with the combos and stuff, it is very hard. Like, I struggled heavily during my casual playthrough. But once it kind of clicks, uh, it's really fun to play. Like, I immensely enjoy the speedrun. Because it's like, you know, a little more than an hour, which is okay lengthwise, absolutely. But it definitely, um, uh, it wants perfection out of you. Uh, at least in this category. Because like I said, one little mistake against any of these enemies and you will be sent back to the last uh, checkpoint, which can, in the worst scenario, lose you minutes. Like, especially in the later chapters where the checkpoints are further uh, apart. Uh, it can be a little bit stressful to get to the next one, not gonna lie. Especially you have to fight like a lot of enemies, and let me tell you, the later enemies in the game, they uh, are not as easy to defeat as these guys, even though they still only take one hit to defeat. Anyway, we are on to the boss of the second chapter, this is Sadamami. He is the first spear user that you will meet during the game. You get him down to half health, then he will jump into the background and send out his goons to fight you. So we kill these four guys, try to regenerate a little bit of stamina, and once he comes back... Uh, okay, we don't want you to do that. Thank you, just get stun locked and die please, and there we go. That was Sadamami and the second chapter. Now we also found our samurai buddies, they were in the background there, if you saw them, down by the steps. And uh, yeah, they're all dead, so we are the only surviving samurai. And now we made it back to our hometown, and lo and behold, Kamikawa Mura was actually just a diversion. Uh, the ultimate goal of the bandits was our village uh, from the get-go. They just wanted to draw the samurai away, so, you know, they had free reign when they attacked the village. And uh, you can see the destruction that they have wrought in the time that we weren't here. So basically, we are now on a rush to get back to Aiko, you know, our sweetheart, and see if she is still alive, and probably try and save a couple of villagers along the way as well. So the game has a total of seven chapters. Like I said, we are in the third one now already. And uh, the endings will actually be, or the ending that we will get, will be decided at the end of the sixth chapter. So you still have quite a ways to get your donations in if you do not want to see the love ending and instead want to see any of the other endings. Now, spoilers, the love ending is the fastest ending to select. Uh, the only thing that I have to do to choose any of the other endings is basically a button prompt. And, uh, you know, it takes less than a second to change your mind there. So it's really not a, a thing that affects the run in any significant way other than maybe losing a second by uh, changing the ending choice by pressing down or up, depending on which other ending you want to see. So that is quite nice from a speedrun perspective, because you can basically choose whatever you want without affecting your run in any significant way. Now there's got to be some fans of vengeance out there, and that is one of the options. You know you all love revenge. <laughs> and the vengeance, I think, is definitely the darkest uh, out of the three, I want to say. I think it's also the one that gets picked the least, so, you know. Just throwing it out there. We've seen love quite a lot. People seem to be seem to love to be in love or watch love or whatever it is. So yeah, switch it up, people. Come on. I mean, all you need is love. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes duty and vengeance also have their place in our hearts. I think. 
Anyway, we now picked up the bow, which is our second ranged weapon. Uh, the bow is more useful in other difficulties because it actually deals quite a bit of damage. Uh, but again, you know, it's against a difficulty, everything dies in one hit anyway, so we don't care about how much damage it actually deals. However, it gives us more ranged uh, opportunities, so to speak, because we only can like carry around uh, three of these kunai, and now we can carry a couple more arrows, so if you want ranged options, we have a couple more, well, options there. <laughs> Oh, got a double kill. Oh, that is nice. That is rare. Like, sometimes the enemies just bunch up in a way that you can hit two of them with one strike, uh, which is obviously a time save because I don't have to line up the other enemy to try and strike at him. Now, this screen will be the first appearance of the Rider enemies. You can either just stand your ground and block their attacks, or if you want to go fast, you roll through them. Now, obviously, this is a little bit finicky because if you mistime your roll, you roll right into their sword strike and die. So you have to be very careful of what you do here. But for marathon safety, I could roll through the last one here. I opt to just, you know, stand my ground and block that attack to not die because otherwise I had to run through that whole screen, screen again and that will always lose you about 20 to 30 seconds or something. And if you remember this screen, this is was actually in the first chapter of the game. We are now back where we started out initially. Which is, you know, a really nice touch because you actually go through a lot of the screens that we went through in the first chapter. And you can see how the environments changed over the course of the last 15 to 20 years. Again, it's not exactly said outright how many years later this is compared to the first chapter. But, you know, since Hiroki has grown quite a lot and he's probably married now, you can probably, you know, 15 to 20 years, I think, is a good guess. Another thing to keep in mind is that every time you get introduced to a new enemy type, like the spear enemy, um, these particular enemies have a lot more health than when they appear as a box standard enemy. However, once again, this is Kensei mode that I didn't want it anyway. And I have to admit, I am definitely afraid of enemies with a spear because they have a lot of reach. They have a lot of attacks that can stagger you or outright negate your block. So uh, I tend to just go with them with range attacks so I don't have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and, you know, risk dying. Another thing to keep in mind is when an enemy reaches the combat plane, um, you can't immediately attack them. They have a brief period of invulnerability, which you have to be mindful of. So what you will see is when an enemy goes onto the combat plane, you'll probably drop his weapon. Like, not ac actually drop it on the ground, but just have it basically a lowered guard position. And during that time, you cannot attack them. They are still invulnerable. However, as soon as they raise their weapon to a combat ready stance, that is when you can start and attack them. So you try and want to be mindful um, of that. Because obviously, if you immediately attack them uh, when they come in the combat plane, then they're still invulnerable. Not only do you, well, you know, not kill them, but you open yourself up to a counter attack and can potentially die from that. And obviously, I don't want that to happen. Oh, that was very close. <laughs> So the thing is, if you don't know this game or this run in particular, especially on cancer difficulty, this can all look very easy. You know, I might make it seem very effortlessly how I mow through these enemies. But you saw in the first chapter, right, where I died like two times already, it can very easily swing in my disfavor here. So everything that's happening here is like very precise. If you make a single mistake like this, you know, it sends you back to the last uh, checkpoint. And then you have to do all of this again, what we just did, and it can lose you a lot of time. As of now, I am basically the only active runner of this category, I guess for this very reason. Uh, there was only one other community member of the speedrun community for this game that has tried this difficulty, and he completed a run run and basically said, never again. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, personally, I haven't been able to complete a deathless run yet. Oh my god, here we go again. Yeah, that was uh, a bad on my part. I haven't been able to complete a deathless run yet. Uh, so, so far, if you can complete this category deathless, it is probably a world record. I want to say. Simply because of that fact. I'm trying to get it, but as you can see, I talk too much. I get distracted, then I die, and I lose time, and I cry. You heard it, all you world record chasers out there. Free world record. 
kind of. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, I, I am whiffing so many first strikes here. It's like really uncanny. Gonna take a little bit of distance for that spear guy here. Uh, because uh, elevations actually plays a large role in how you uh, use your ranged weapons. Because Hiroki is a little bit dumb. Like, uh, you cannot actually aim your bow, your shuriken, or your other ranged weapons. He will only ever shoot them in a straight line. And if enemies are a little bit on an elevation, you tend to miss your shot, which obviously is uh, not good. You don't want to miss your shot because you can only carry so many arrows in that. And this little dance that you have to do with these enemies, this is basically when the AI just cannot decide which enemy is about to attack you. Um, because, you know, even though the AI tries to be fair during the fights. Also, the boss of the third chapter coming up and uh, we died. Oh no. So once again, we met the Bandalord. As it turns out, it's actually the one that we faced in the first chapter. You know, the very first one that also killed our master. And now he basically killed us, I guess. So GG's, run over. Well, not quite. Like, uh, All right, well, thank you for running, and uh, we'll go ahead and transition to the next run. <laughs> Underestimate by a long shot, I suppose. <laughs> Um, truth be told, though, there is actually a secret ending to the game if you manage to beat that boss. Uh, because, you know, obviously the uh, logic of the game doesn't think you would be able to beat him. But, you know, you get a trophy for it, you get a secret ending for it, and the nice thing is, even though you get the secret ending, the game still uh, lets you continue on in the fourth chapter, which we are now. So, you know. Obviously, we're not going to try and do that because fighting that guy is obviously just a time waste because you can't just go up to him and he hits you once and you're dead, and that is that. Because, you know, remember, everything dies in one hit, except the bosses. Now, boss fights will always uh, work normally, as they do on the other difficulties, so those are actually pretty hard to do. Like we saw in the end of the second chapter, right, where you had to uh, fight Zaratami, the spear guy. Now, he wasn't that hard, but starting from chapter 4 here, the bosses are gonna be getting a lot harder to defeat. Um, anyway, as I was saying, uh, the enemies tend to try and fight you fairly in a way that there will only ever be one enemy on screen which actively tries to attack you. And that is the one that basically runs up to your face and tries to hit you. However, it can be a little bit finicky to find out which of the enemies on screen is actually trying to do that because they're all like shuffling back and forth while the AI decides which of uh, them it, try, it uh, tries and let attack you. So, you know, you're just shuffling around with them, trying to see who will do the attack so you can actually try and hit them because the others will just constantly back paddle if you try to advance upon them. Um, which can be very, uh, you know, finicky in the way because you can never be able to hit them. They will constantly dodge your attacks and that will all also lose you a little bit of time there. Because, you know, you could just run up to the other enemy that is trying to run up to you in the first place and hit him in the face and, you know, try and get the next enemy to attack you. Oh my god. I mean, it is awful sporting of them to only attack you one at a time. Right? I mean, to be fair, I would rather, um, much rather them all try to attack me at once, because then I could just, you know, turn around every time and just kill them with one strike anyway, so... Oh well. It is what it is, I suppose. They're just following action movie rules. Only one person gets <laughs> to try to attack you at once. Yeah. Uh, speaking of action movies, uh, you've probably seen that the game is in black and white only, and that is a stylistic choice, because the creative director of this game is heavily, or oh, a big fan of Akira Kurosawa, the Japanese movie director, and he was basically trying to create a, you know, Akira Kurosawa game in a way, or rather a game that heavily that is heavily inspired by the movies of Akira Kurosawa, and I think he really nailed the aesthetic. Because what you have to know, the game is actually in full color, so everything you see here, you know, has been modeled in color. However, at the end of it, they put a black and white filter over it to get the right um, tones of the blacks and the whites. So it's not just a black and white game. You can actually see that if you play the PC version of the game. Now, I'm on PlayStation 5, so I can't show it. But if you play the PC version of the game, there's an unofficial mod uh, that you can download, which actually removes the black and white filter, so you can play the game in color. 
And let me tell you, it looks gorgeous. Like, if you've seen games like Ghost of Tsushima, I would say it is on par with that. It looks that good. I mean, it looks gorgeous in black and white, so I'm sure in Absolutely. color it's... Absolutely. Like, I really dig the aesthetic. Like, every time I play this game, especially after I've done a speedrun, I'm just totally in the mood to go back and watch a film like Seven Samurai or Ran or Kagemusha or what, or what have you. It's just, it really, you know, sells the mood of those times for sure. Yeah, call me a basic, but Seven Samurai is my, my favorite. Which one was that? Seven Samurai. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, it's, it's such an iconic movie. It's... Ah, so good. Now I want to watch it again. God damn it. Maybe we'll do that after this one. We'll see. Anyway, I'm going out of my way to pick up a stamina upgrade here. This is not needed for the run. I just pick it up for a little bit of safety um, because the upcoming boss is pretty hard. And uh, like we've established, stamina management is critical for the success of this run. Now coming up, we're going to fight seven samurai. Speaking of, here they are. And uh, yep, obviously they killed me. Oh, sorry, I think it's six samurai. We are the seventh one. Oh, how did that not kill me? But yeah, like I said, it is a bit hard to figure out who is the one that is trying to attack you right here, right now. I was waiting a little bit for the last one to take his turn striking me because I do not want to die to the last one because then I would have to go and fight all of them again. And if you like the idea of murdering people with katanas in video games, you might like our grand prize, the Devolver Digital Game Pack. Mm -hmm. You can be put in the running for if you donate at least $40 over the course of the marathon. It includes several games where you can kill things with, with katanas and some that you don't. It's got Disc Room, Ape Out, Shadow Warrior 3, Kill People with Katanas, Pico Niku, Hotline Miami Collection, which is 1 and 2. Pretty sure there's a katana in at least one of those games. <laughs> Death Store, it's an umbrella, but it's sort of a katana. My friend Pedro, I've never played it. Katana Zero, katana's in the name. The Messenger, Kill People with Katana that whole, the whole game. And Gris, which as far as I'm aware, does not contain a katana. Back I, to you. I, I want to play Katana Zero so bad, but sadly, I'm mainly playing on PlayStation, and that is the only system Katana Zero has not released yet. And I am so sad about it. It's like every time I hear about that game, I want to play it. I maybe even want to speed run it. Oh my god. Why is it not on PlayStation, developers? Why? What is happening there? Why are you holding out on me? So as you can tell, I don't like this screen because it is very hard to see if you're actually in range of the enemies or not because of the camera angle there. And that is like the thing that's kind of a little bit at odds uh, with the game sometimes because obviously they're trying to go for very cinematic camera angles uh, on some of these screens, but that also makes it kind of hard sometimes to actually see what is going on in the fights. Oh god. Another thing that is a little bit finicky is um, obviously, you know, in a speedrun, I always want to hold forward to, you know, move forward and go fast. However, if you hold forward an attack, Hiroki will actually do a stabbing attack or a thrust. And that is an attack that I absolutely do not want to do because while it does have quite a bit of reach to it, it is so slow and has so much recovery that it leaves you wide open for counter attacks. So every time you basically see me do this flusting attack, that is a mistake. And obviously in a category like that, you know, every mistake can lead to your death. So uh, you don't want to see it and you don't want to do it. Now we are fast approaching the boss of the fourth chapter here, which will be a demon of a character that we have met previously. Because we haven't talked about it yet, but I guess you can kind of guess that we are in a kind of purgatory at the moment. We're not quite in hell yet, you know, which would be Yomi. We are basically in purgatory fighting against these uh, not quite skeleton enemies or whatever they are. I think they're called the Blighted, if I remember correctly. And uh, coming up will be the Ico Demon. Who would have thought we're going to fight our wife? who has turned into a hideous demon, and this fight is a little bit precise and hard, so give me a moment here. I'll let you well, step, step my wife. While you take your moment, I'll, uh, I'll talk. Um, I mean, 
I guess it makes sense that you're in purgatory. You were murdered at the end of the the last chapter. All right. And if you like to, to murder people, prefer, possibly in a sacrificial manner, if you donate $5, you can be in the running for Cult of the Lamb, the sacrifice game by Devolver Digital. I've heard very good things about that game, so I'm inclined to try that out eventually as well, but I just didn't have the time yet. Um, anyway, that was a pretty flawless fight against Ico. That fight can be very finicky because you actually do not have enough stamina to just uh, continuously attack her. You will run out eventually, so you kind of have to pace your attacks so you actually do refill it from time to time. Um, so, you know, you don't run out because if you completely run out of stamina, you have to wait for all of it to refill because uh, Hiroki will go out of this tired state. And that is a long time. And in a boss fight, that is basically spelling instant doom for you. Anyway, we are now in the fifth chapter of the game. This is the longest chapter of the game and also the chapter where we are properly introduced to Yomi. So hooray, we are now in the underworld or hell or whatever uh, you want to call it. So, you know, Trek to Yomi, it's basically a loose translation of highway to hell, <laughs> you can say. So uh, here we are in our own personal little hell. Clearly they forgot to just get the licensing. <laughs> Probably. Or, you know, they just wanted to try and make it a little bit more Japanese. Because calling it Highway Gel and then making it a Samurai game mm -hmm. might be a little bit off-brand. Anyway, instead, you know, since we are in hell now, uh, we're not fighting normal enemies anymore. We are fighting ghost versions of them. And they obviously are tankier than their normal counterparts. However, once again, can't say mode, everything dies in one hit anyway, so we don't care. But they also have different attack patterns and abilities, which makes them quite a lot more dangerous. Because the next enemy type that you will see, uh, they can throw their swords at you as a ranged attack, and that can be very deadly. Sounds like a bad idea strategically to throw your sword at someone, because then you don't have your sword anymore. It would be, but once again, there goes the can just summon it back. So these are the enemies. And as you see, he was trying to throw his sword at me, but I didn't let him. I just immediately killed him, because that animation has quite a bit of wind-up time. So if you're just fast enough, you can just run up to them and kill them. However, if you're not fast enough to do that, well, joke's on you, they will just kill you. So all throughout this run, you're just always making like minuscule strategic decisions. Like, do you want to go for an attack? Do you want to rather wait it out and block it and then go for a counter attack? What are you going to do? And, you know, this repeats every single time you face a new enemy. And that just adds up a lot over the course of the run, as you can imagine, because you're actually fighting quite a few enemies. And that is what also makes this run basically so interesting and always just a little bit fresh because the enemies tend to behave in a different way every time, just a little bit. But you're always like on your toes, you know, what will the enemy do? How do you react to that? And that is what makes the run like very enjoyable to run, I think. Um, here we just got introduced to another enemy type, which are the female ghosts. I absolutely hate them because what they can do, they erect a barrier around them, which... Um, protects them from one of your attacks and in the meantime they will try to summon more enemies now obviously having to fight more enemies than you already do is a time loss so you do not want to let them summon any more enemies so you will try to kill them as quickly as possible so they are like a high priority target for you now doing a couple of these rotating puzzles uh that is always the same uh solution to them they do not they are not randomized in any way shape or form so i have all the solutions right here next to me which is kind of nice, saves a lot of time. So just waiting for that audible uh, kill confirmation when you hear these guys sigh or yell or whatever, you know that they are dead because there was one enemy behind me off screen which I just turned around and threw a shuriken at and as soon as they die I can advance to the next screen because that is also a thing like you cannot bypass any of these enemies. The game will not let you so you have to kill every enemy before the game allows you to advance. So I can't just run by any enemy here. I have to kill them all. 
I hate that guy. He just keeps circling back and forth, like, more or less endlessly. It takes a long while for them to actually go ahead and try to attack you. Same with these guys here. Come on, dude. And obviously, if that keeps happening, it can lose you quite a bit of time. Which is always uh, not that great to see. You hate, so you hate to see it. That's what I'm trying to say here. Anyway, if you look at the environments that we go through, I mean, I don't know about you, but I think this just looks drop that gorgeous. Like, you know, the whole environmental design is just spot on. It is so great to see. Got a bit of a puzzle going on here, but calling it a puzzle is a bit much. Maybe you just have to not get squished by these blocks and then just wait for the other opening to uh, make way. So you can go through this. And here we get to introduce another enemy type, which are the Ronin. And they are basically the hardest normal enemies that you can face in the game. If you're playing on other difficulties, they have a lot of health. They have a lot of different combos that they're going to use. But more importantly, they can teleport around you. And not only that, but they can also leave behind an after image. So they're basically summoning a clone which will just stand in place and not do anything. However, if you were to attack that clone, it will instantly sap all of your stamina, like right away. There is no way around that. So you have to be really careful um, who you're attacking if you're not accidentally hitting that clone, because if you do, you're probably dead if there's another enemy near you. Okay. <laughs> and you know, just demonstrating how easy it is to die in this game. Because we've had quite a good sailing so far for the longest while now. So it was just time for another death, I suppose. But this is what I meant, you know, if you just spot on with your timings, you can kill these guys immediately when they get into the combat plane and just outright kill them before they have any time to shuffle around anymore. But, you know, it's very precise. If you do it wrong, they will probably hit you with a counter-attack, killing you in the process, and then you have to try again. Well, you know what else will kill you? Not having enough oxygen. And you know what produces oxygen? Coral reefs. Absolutely. And we are here to, you know, get some money for those. So uh, we'll have a mid-boss fight coming up. And after that, you can go ahead and pull like that wonderful charity that we are raising money for this weekend. But for now, we are having a refight against a guy that we should know from Chapter 2 because this is Adamami again. And um, I guess he got us revenge. <laughs> Fair enough, buddy. <laughs> Just immediately going for the attack, not even giving me the chance to approach him and get a hit in. Uh, a refight. Let's try this again. All right, okay. <laughs> I guess he's having a good time. So what I'm trying to do here is I have to approach him somehow because, you know, he has a larger reach than me. I only have a measly sword. So I have to get close to him somehow and then try and stun lock him with one of the combos that we got. Okay. Wisening up a little bit here. Oh. But this one is basically the same as before. He goes down to half health, then he will summon more of his goons, which you have to kill before he comes back, but it also gives you a little bit of respite uh, so you can recharge your stamina on your own. Then he will come back, and we stun lock him again. And, excuse me. Oh god. Here, okay, what? What are you doing here, Ricky? What was that? Why did you turn around? I did not hit that button. God damn it. He survived with a sliver of health left. And uh, yeah, you know, stuff like that can just lose you minutes, as you can probably tell. So let's try this again. I think the problem was I didn't get my combo uh, right. I always like stop one button press short. So I didn't get the stun of the combo, so I could go ahead and repeat it. So... Alright, there we go. That is how that is supposed to look. Okay, and with that, we have a bit of a downtime coming on here. I mean, there will be more fights and stuff, but I guess you've all seen how those play out. So, River, if you want to go ahead and pluck anything, now would be a good time. Oh, of course, and of course, you might if you just if you're just dropping in on us. This is Green Gaming Fest 2022. 
October edition. <laughs> we're benefiting uh, Green Gaming. We're sp we're speed running to save the planet. Uh, each year we pick a charity that is looking to make an impact on our climate crisis. We only have one planet to live on, and we should do what we can to make sure we can coexist. Uh, our charity for this uh, this Green Gaming Fest is Mother of Corals. Mother of Corals' mission is simple. We rely on coral reefs for a lot. They produce a significant amount of the world's oxygen, which I like to breathe personally. Uh, and more than a billion people rely on their on reefs for their livelihoods. But coral reefs are in trouble, and now more than ever, we need to return the favor. At Mother of Corals, we provide tools and training to enable coastal communities to create, maintain, and share artificial coral reef habitats with the public in order to increase their environmental and economic sustainability. Um, I mean, I like breathing personally, so <laughs> production of oxygen is important to me. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, and, you know, a billion people relying on reefs for their livelihood, also pretty important. Um, but, yeah, and then uh, I guess I could talk about some of the prizes for uh, anyone who does choose to donate. Uh, the big one is if you donate at least $40 over the course of the marathon is a Devolver Digital Game Pack. It's 10 games, Disc Room, Ape Out, Shadow Warrior 3, Pikaniku, the Hotline Miami Collection, which is both games. Uh, Death's Door, My Friend Pedro, Katana Zero, The Messenger, and Grease. Um, I've played about a little over half of those games. All of them have been amazing. Uh, also from Devolver Digital, if you donate at least $5, you'll be in the running to possibly win Cult of the Lamb or Return to Monkey Island. Um, I'm not a point-and-click fan, but I know quite a few people who love the Monkey Island ser uh, mm. series. Uh, also for five dollars, uh, you can be in the running for the Crack Pet Show by Ravenage Games. Uh, <clears throat> this has got a, a weird description, so I'll just read it. The Crack Pet Show is an action-packed roguelike roguelite shoot 'em up about mutated animals that fight in a bizarre TV show, crushing their opponents with a variety of weapons. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it sounds pretty interesting. I'll go on, right? It, it does. <laughs> it does. Uh, and then, oh, the, the, we have one other prize for $10. You can be in the running to win uh, Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania plus three DLCs. That's a lot of value. That is. Uh, and looks like we have two of those to give out. We have different numbers. Uh, we have 15, I believe, of the Devolver Digital Pack, 10 packs to, to give out. Uh, looks like seven of the Crack Pet show, two Super Monkey Balls, uh, five Cult of the Lambs, and five Return to Monkey Islands. So if you want any of those games, you, you better get to donating. If you want to keep breathing the oxygen that Coral Reefs provide to us, you should probably get to donating. Absolutely. <laughs> So what you saw me do there like a couple of streams back with the little boat is actually a little bit of a speedrun tech. Uh, you are supposed to first free the boat from its confines by hitting the rope that is attached to it and after that activate the switch that lets the water in. Because if you do it the other way around like I did and you're not fast enough, you will actually drown because uh, you, know, you won't be able to uh, quickly enough get to the boat. So you have to be very precise there and have to be absolutely sure that you can make that. Because most people, you know, hit the switch first and then they try to get on the boat. But since it's still tied to the rope, it will actually not go all the way to the top and then it will drown. So you have to be very careful of that happening. All right. Uh, we do have a new donation in from Words, who will be part of our score attack race uh, in Star Fox 64, coming up right after Trek to Yomi. Uh, it's a $1 towards uh, choosing the Star Fox region incentive, uh, which is now at $1 out of 50. And comment is just, breathing is good. And that's true. <laughs> breathing is good. I mean, there are a lot of things in life that you can, uh, you know, that you don't need, but I think breathing, breathing is pretty essential. It is. I am, in fact, I will, I will admit, I am addicted to oxygen. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so we're at 46 minutes, so we probably are getting fairly close to where we're going to have to cut off the pick the ending uh, here to Trek of Yomi. Uh, it still currently sits with love winning with $1, duty and vengeance. No one cares about duty nor vengeance. <laughs> How dare you? And How for the next you? run, Star Fox 64, we are at $1 out of 50 to force words to play on the Japanese version of Star Fox 64. Speaking of, we are now coming up uh, to the boss of the fifth chapter. So we are still one whole chapter away from having to decide which ending we want. So, you know, you people still have a bit of time coming in. However, the boss of the fifth chapter is Santoro. This is actually our old master that, you know, died in the first chapter here. He looks a little different. You know, definitely gained a lot of muscle and stuff. Uh, but yeah, he's still using, or he's now using a spear too instead of a katana. And he can absolutely murder you if you are not paying attention. However, this was a flawless fight, so we are now on to the sixth chapter. And do remember, at the end of the sixth chapter, we have to cut off that ending incentive. So you have about, uh, I want to say, seven to ten more minutes or so until we have to close that. So get those donations in, if you like breathing. Because as we like to say, breathing is good. Mm-hmm. Taking a bit sniff right now. Ah, oxygen. So good. Uh, Story-wise, we are now in the depths of Yomi, you know, making our trip ever deeper into the underworld. And, um, yeah, let's see what will happen once we reach the end of it. Because as you can see with all these skulls lying around, it's not exactly a happy place. Like... If you think this is your happy place, I have bad news for you. Look, I'm certain there are some people whose happy place includes lots of skulls lying around. I mean, I guess the Doom guy would have an absolute field day down here. But, yeah. Oh, he has a summer home right behind that skull <laughs> pile. <laughs> I could see that. Ah, come on, dude. And let me give our merch store a quick plug. It's there in the chat. Um, there's some awesome, awesomely designed stuff in there. Especially there's a glow-in-the-dark beanie, beanie mm -hmm. that is just super cool. Yes. Um, and every piece of merch that is purchased, uh, $5, will get do donated directly to Mother of Corals. So, uh, you know, stay warm, get oxygen. <laughs> that is the best marketing blubber I've ever heard, I think. <laughs> I am very tempted by that beanie, not gonna lie. It looks so good. I would if I wasn't a, a, like a human furnace. I can't wear like beanies <laughs> because I, I boil. Fair enough. I mean, you know, when it's, when it's cold outside, it's just nice to have something on your head, I think. But I totally get that too. Yeah. Just that shipping cost to Europe is like, oh, you're probably paying as much as for the item itself. But you're rewarding yourself both with an awesome beanie and some oxygen to breathe. Uh, good arguments, good arguments, good sir. Okay, this is another section where we are being shot at from the background. You can see these ghost archers there. And I actually have to be very careful to not get hit by the arrows for obvious reasons. So taking some strategic stops along the way to not get hit by them. And I got hit anyway because I'm an idiot. Oh my lord. It's been a long while since I've hit by one, been hit by one of these arrows. I'm not gonna lie to you here. 
The thing is, you could wait for these barricades or these blocks to come and drop down to give you a little bit of color, but obviously that is slow. And they also don't stick around for a long while. They're going pretty quickly, but I guess I will just take a strategic rest here, wait for the next arrow, and then run, and just make this a little bit safer. Because dying at the tail end of these sections is like always ah, infuriating. As you can imagine. No doubt. I got a quick one. We have a $49 donation from Rock and I to finish off the Choose Star Fox region incentive, which means mm -hmm. in the next race, words will be playing on the Japanese version. So that should be fun. And we got a little bit of introduction to Japanese run right here, right now, I guess, with the Japanese audio track. So, you know, everybody should be in the mood for a Japanese run of Star Fox, I suppose. And apparently there's a four point difference between the two versions. Oh, my God. It's going to make all the difference, right? And yes, thank you, Rock and I, for your donation. Uh -huh. And for completing that uh, that incentive, that means you are entered to win all of the different prizes mm -hmm. at forty nine dollars: the Devolver Digital Pack, the Crack Pet Show, Super Monkey Ball, Cult of the Lamb, and Return to Monkey Island. That's a double lot of double stuff. the monkeys, double. We got Monkey Ball and Monkey Island. Okay, I'm taking it a little bit slow on this screen because if I die here, I go all the way back to just after the archers. And obviously, I don't want that to happen. This is one of the screens that is like the heaviest punishment to death because right after this is the shrine right here. So if you die here, you probably lose about two minutes or so. It is brutal. And I mean, I died to this guy, but it's okay. It was just after the checkpoint, so I'm not worried about it too much. It's just, you know, why, dude? Like, why? What did I ever do to you? I mean, apparently a lot, but because canonically, as they describe it, these are all the people that you killed in life, which is uh, quite a lot. Like, oh my god, Shiroku has got the kill count. And it's only rising because he's killing them again when they are in hell. What a guy. I mean, does that really count, though? Does that really add to your body count if, you, if you're killing them when they're already dead? I mean, it's kind of like, you know, in a fantasy game when you're killing skeletons and zombies and stuff like that, I suppose. It's like, huh? It's sort of a gray zone. <laughs> I mean, if you kill a demon in hell, what happens there? Like, does it just respawn there? Like, immediately? In another room or something? We need answers. Anyway, we are kind of approaching the end of the sixth chapter here. So what will happen now? Once I open this portal that you can see in the background, I will jump between different um, regions from the, pre uh, from the early game. Uh, they are all separated by these uh, rotating obelisks that you can see right here. So at the end of one of these sections, I will rotate one of these obelisks and get teleported to the next section. I will do this about five times. So at the end, when I get reach the fifth obelisk, that would be when we cut off um, the ending choice. Gotcha. So, yes. Just give me a real quick, or I guess, oh, are, are all of them that short? In which case, it'll only be a couple minutes here or? Yeah, it will be about three to four minutes from here on out. All right, in about three minutes, I'll give her one last uh, one last refresh on the donation tracker and we'll find out if love wins. I can let you know when I'm in the last region and when I hit that obelisk, that would be the cutoff, I guess. That'll, that'll be perfect. So another range weapon that we actually picked up in chapter 4 that I've never talked about is the Otsuzu. This is basically a hand cannon and it has the added benefit that it will actually pierce through enemies. So it can actually hit multiple enemies at once. The problem with that is enemies don't exactly tend to line up in this game. So that ability is uh, kind of useless, I want to say. And it's also 
uh, hellishly sluggish. So we'll probably very rarely see it in a speedrun. Like, there are one or two situations where it has its uses, but they are very rare. So, you know. I might use it at uh, you know, a later screen coming up in just a little bit here, just to show it off, because it does have a use there, but it's very rarely used. So yeah, if you look very closely, you can kind of make out that some of these um, you know, locations that we pass by here are actually from a little bit earlier in the game. So it's you know, a nice throwback to the journey that we've been on so far. There's one enemy that spawns all the way in the back there and he's just leisurely walking toward us. I hate that guy with a passion because he just loses me time. Do not like him. At all! So this is the gun. Did I hit both of them? No. I only hit one of the enemies, so that shot was completely wasted. <laughs> I mean, I still hit one enemy, but you know, I'd rather hit both of them and kill them. But it is what it is, I suppose. Okay, so this on screen here is the second to last obelisk. So we are about to walk into the last section. And once I reach the end of the next section, that would be the cutoff for the ending incentive. So we have probably less than a minute or so if somebody wants to go ahead and snipe a different ending. Yep, you better snipe fast. Uh, well, in the meanwhile, we do have $10 from Young Toonfish. Uh, Comment is, oxygen is my favorite gas. I'm taking a deep breath right now. Ah, that's the good stuff. And that is going to naming the file in Majora's Mask, Coral, which is quite... Okay, here is the portal. Once I go through that portal, please go ahead and cut off the incentive now. All right, give it one last refresh. And it looks like love conquers all. All right, we'll go with love then. Makes it easy because that is a default choice anyway. Anyway, end of the sixth chapter. We killed our wife as a demon. We killed our master as a demon. Time to face ourselves. And uh, we killed ourselves, I guess, but in the wrong way. <laughs> so this fight is uh, very tricky. It's very technical too, because what you kind of want to do is uh, try and stun lock. What hit me there? I didn't even see him swing his sword. What the? I called shenanigans. Okay, buddy, this is getting stupid. But yeah, that is something that can definitely happen th with this fight. Like, it is very finicky to get through, so this might take a little bit of time here. Let's try another combo. Okay, this is looking better, but I'm messing it up. Okay, there we go. All right, made it through. And then we choose the love ending, and we are now in the last chapter of the game. So we have about seven to ten minutes left in this run. Uh, we are now back where we died at the end of chapter three, because as it turns out, this was all like, you know, some kind of illusion and soul searching and purpose finding and whatnot, because, uh, you know, Hiroki was basically torn on what he needs to do, like, uh, shall he follow his duty, shall he avenge his loved ones, shall he take a completely different path, and all the time that he spent in hell, metaphorically speaking, uh, was to, you know, find his purpose, so to speak. And that is why you get that choice at the end of the sixth chapter, to see, okay, what have you learned, How, what have you decided to do once you go back to the world of the living? and have a chance to make amends. And that is what we're trying to do here now as we make our way uh, through the last part of our hometown, which is now completely ransacked basically because you know it's been hours possibly uh, since we have been quote unquote killed. And we are now just trying to make our way to the bandit Lord Kagero and uh, you know have one last duel with him. 
in order to get some well-deserved revenge here. Ooh, that was that was close. But you have a gun. You could just shoot him. I could, but uh, he actually has a trick up his sleeve, which we will see once we actually get to him. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do, but okay. So these enemies right here, these new spear enemies that are also armored, are the toughest enemies in the game. They have a lot of health. They're using a spear, so they also have a lot of reach. They can instantly kill you with one of their attacks if you don't parry it. Uh, they are just an all-around pain. And luckily, there are only like four or five of them in the whole game. Um, and as long as you are having some, you know, arrows or kunai on cancer difficulty they are not that problematic but if you don't uh well have fun fighting those guys oh. but if you pay close attention you can actually spot a lot of uh screens that we went through in the very first chapter of the game but once again you know due to the time warp uh everything changed just a little bit but um the developers even said that the first chapter, that the last chapter, the seventh chapter, he is basically just the first chapter, but with different assets, which is, you know, pretty cool, actually. I think. And it's a nice little throwback because, you know, as it always is in games and stories, everything ends where it started, right? At the end of the game, you always come back to your hometown and see it ran. Oh my god, I forgot about you. Ooh. Okay. Made it. So let's see who's on the combat plane. It's you. Then I can. Oh god. Yeah. That guy sacrificed himself, so I was not able to shoot the spear guy. What a guy. Because as you can see, it is kind of slow to shoot the bow, and uh, I still went for it because I wasn't sure if I could make the shot or not. Turns out I couldn't. <laughs> oh, that is not what I wanted to do. Alright, this works. It's a little bit random which of these enemies comes into the combat plane first and which of these just dance around a little bit. So it can be a little bit finicky, so you just have to react to the situation that arises and make your best judgment call as how to proceed here. And now we finally get to kill these archers that have been shooting at us for a couple of chapters now. I think they started like in chapter 3 and then had a cameo in all the repeating chapters after that. And we finally got our redemption of these guys. So coming up are the last couple normal enemies in the game. This is the second to last fight here. And this is the last screen where you fight normal enemies. Very clean so far. There is one more guy coming. There is. Alright, so we have now defeated all the normal enemies in the game. The only enemy left in the game is the last boss. Alright, and when will final time be called? Uh, time will be called on the last hit on the final boss. I will try to announce it, but it can be a little bit finicky, so bear with me. That's fine. You know, as long as I don't just leave the timer running for minutes afterward, <laughs> it'll be fine. Yeah, fair enough. So before you face the final boss, we have a little bit of an escape section going on here because there is a lot of fire going on and a lot of oil for whatever reason. And there's a magic death pixel like right in this corner here. Let's see if I can bypass it. I did. I didn't die. That is perfect. So now we just have to make it to the end of here. Because if you just touch the fire for just a, not even a second, a millisecond basically on cancer difficulty, it will immediately kill you because you don't have a health bar. I got a lot of explosions, setting the mood for the final fight. Cool guys don't look at explosions. All right, they just slide down the slope. So yeah, this is the last checkpoint in the game. I am now going to pick up a couple more arrows and kunai. And up here is where we started the game. You know, this is our dojo. And this is where Kagero, the bandit lord, is holed up. So this will be the final boss fight. 
So the first phase, we're just gonna go ahead and parry his attacks and counter with two heavy strikes of our own. Just like that. And once we've done that, we, that was the first phase, he will now turn into his demon self. So he now has magical abilities like this fireball attack and a couple others. So we have to be very careful here as obviously the fire will kill us in one hit. Which would be bad. So we're just gonna do this. And at half health, he summons his past self. So these are the bosses from the first and third chapter. And we now have to kill both of these. Now, stamina management is very crucial at this part of the fight. So use the same tactics here, parry him and counter with two heavy strikes. And then Kagero will be back. And once we replenish his health bar here, that will be time. So I will try to hit him. Oh God, this is very finicky now. Uh, probably dead, yep. If you are backed into a corner like this and he does the flaming ground, there is no way for you to survive that on um, cancer difficulties. So we have to do it all over again. And that is why this fight in particular can lose you minutes. If you keep repeatedly dying at certain points, it loses you a lot of time. And let me tell you, I sometimes die like five times in a row to this guy because this fight is very stressful. As you saw, there are a lot of phases to it. So a lot of things that can go wrong. He has a lot of health. Uh, he summons other enemies that you have to fight in between that can kill you just like that. And uh, this is definitely a final boss that deserves the title. Like there isn't a single fight in the game I think that is as hard as this one. That's good, because, you know, we all, we've all we all played games where the final boss was disappointing. Yep. This isn't one of them. The problem here is that when you finish off his first phase, like, the game bugs out a little bit and puts you way too far to the right. And if that happens, he is... Uh, or it it kind of is with his AI that you can just die. You know, just like this. I'm way too far to the right here. I should be further down to the left to bait out his fireball attack. Okay, that was far enough away. That is good. That summons the ghosts again. Now, I'm specifically going to the left here, so these two ghosts cannot surround me and would attack me from both sides. Oh, he was still attacking me. Okay, all right. Yeah, but, you know, since we've been running for like an hour uh, with death on the line at every single turn, getting to this boss fight uh, can't just be a toll on your nerves. Like, he can definitely get to you. Also, Hiroki, why are you moving up to that guy? Like, why? That is absolutely not what I want you to do. Okay, let's do it this way, I suppose. Spacing is kind of rubbish. Okay. Still alive. No, he's not. And... Uh, time! Woo. GG! Yeah, like I said, the last boss fight can definitely take a lot out of you, but since you guys graciously donated for the ending's choice, let's just, you know, watch this in silence for just a moment here.
Cool. And that was Trick to Yomi, everyone. As you saw in the love ending, uh, Hiroki basically decides to die again, so to speak, because uh, Kagero had actually killed Aiko. You saw her corpse uh, in the dojo at the end there. And since he decided he wants to be with her, you know, because he loves her, um, he basically dies as well, and they are reunited in the afterlife. If you choose the duty of Angel's ending, this obviously plays out way differently. So uh, maybe don't donate for that next time I run this during a marathon. Anyway, um, practicing for this marathon actually set a new world record in this category with one hour, six minutes and change. If I see the timer correctly, I'm like four minutes behind that because I did take quite a few deaths, especially against Kagero uh, at the end there. But that is just how this category can go. You know, you make a mistake and you lose a lot of time. So this is one of these categories. There aren't any crazy glitches or bugs, bugs, uh, bug abuse or whatever. It's just, you know, it demands perfection from the get-go like from the very first uh second that you hit the timer to the very end you just have to be in the game you know do basically everything perfectly and then you may get a world record anyway um a couple shout outs to the tractor yomi speeder community it, we are a small bunch of runners uh not a lot of people are well, interested in running this game so far. I think that's a damn shame because it is a very good game. Uh, go ahead and buy it. It's like only $20 or something. And if you can get it during a sale, you'd probably even less. But you get a lot out of it, I think. Like my first casual playthrough took me like six to eight hours trying to get everything, like all the combos, all the upgrades and stuff like that. So there is quite a bit of uh, content in this game to find. And there's also a lot of different difficulties, obviously, as you saw here, as you only get access to the cancer difficulty once you've completed the game at least once. And I think even on Rona difficulty. Um, thank you so much for Green Gaming Fest for having me once again. It's always a pleasure to be running doing this marathon for a great cause, nonetheless less i mean it keeps the um charity that we donate money for keeps changing but not the cause um you know in the grander picture i think it's definitely something that a lot of people should pay more attention to and um yeah good luck to all the rest of the runners we still have a whole weekend ahead of us with more money raising and great runs to come so keep donating guys have a fun weekend and 